Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. We're going to finish up lesson 45 this morning. Nice and early. And here we go. So we got to my computer will cooperate. Fantastic. I am frozen. Oh, here we go. So we had a uh, we had an audio about waffles sound good. You guys remember? I don't remember exactly when. I don't know if it was this lesson or if it was a previous lesson. But we uh, we had an audio where the guy wants to eat waffles, so he suggests brunch, and she says waffles sound good. So last time we talked about these four ways to say parece que. So I guess uh, can be translated as parece que. It seems like, it looks like, and it sounds like. We use it looks like when something I see gives me that idea. So it looks like she's not happy because maybe she's her face is red. Uh, she's uh, She gives some kind of appearance that she's not happy it sounds like she's not happy maybe i hear something that makes me think you know she's uh throwing things or um loudly doing something that makes it sound like she's not happy so in in the case of it looks and it sounds like those are based on things that i see or i hear usually and the same thing if it looks good or it sounds good so for example if someone makes a cake if someone makes a cake i can say and i see it come out and it it looks good then i would say it looks good so the cake looks good in that case uh it would be translated as parece bom parece delicioso se for comida parece deliciosa or it looks good uh if somebody is working on a project and you can say it looks good. My dad always shows me. Uh, he sometimes he makes models of cars for people, and he paints them. and And uh, people pay him to make models of cars. And I always have to say it looks good, even though I'm not <laughs> I'm not very interested in the the projects usually because I don't like cars. But uh, what I always say is it looks good. It sounds good can be something that literally sounds good, like uh, music, or if someone is, uh, someone says, let me sing you a song, or if someone plays the piano and they say, let me play you a song, you can, you can say it sounds good. So that's something that literally sounds good to your ears, but it also can be that same idea of Parece, parece que, right? It sounds like, but it sounds good. Parece bom. Parece alguma coisa legal. So, uh, for example, if someone says, let's go to the lake this weekend. Let's go to the lake this weekend. It sounds good. Or that sounds good. Sounds good. And sometimes we even just cut the it or that and just say sounds good. So in that case, it would, it would be... The idea would be, parece alguma coisa legal, parece uma boa ideia. So we can use it sounds good when something literally sounds good, or when something parece bom, or, or gostei, right? Sounds good. Gostei da ideia, parece uma boa ideia. Sounds good. So when we say looks good to be visibly attractive or desirable, so in the case of the cake, when the cake comes out, it looks desirable, right? I, it looks like something that I want to eat. Uh, also, when someone, their appearance, these clothes look good on you. 
So if if someone is wearing an outfit in conjunto, and you say, "Wow, those clothes look good," those clothes look good, and then you can also say, "Those clothes look good on you." And we'll say, "Cai bem," and we'll say, "Esse conjunto cai bem," and we'll say, "Outfit ou essa essa roupa cai bem," and we'll say. So you can also use "look good" in that situation. The vase looks good anywhere. So vase, I think, é vaso também, né? And in, uh, for example, aqui these velhos que vem lá da da China, nós chamamos de vase também. So the vase looks good anywhere. Para uh, parece bom em qualquer lugar que você coloque. So the vase looks good anywhere. Sounds good. To hear something good, I'll meet you there tomorrow. Sounds good, right? So good idea. Parece uma boa. I'll meet you here tomorrow. Sounds good. The waterfall sounds nice. So sounds good or sounds nice. Then the, uh, the literally the sound of the waterfall. I'm I'm sitting there. I'm contemplating. I'm meditating, and I I hear the sound of the waterfall, and I can say the waterfall sounds good or sounds nice. Any questions about that? No. Professor, é, uh -huh. referente a sounds good, quando fala de música, é, aí fala, é, fala só, é, sounds good, the music sounds good. Uh -huh. Aí quando é de, assim, de sound, look, é referente a, a um sentimento? No. It can be. Well, uh, not. A, I wouldn't say exactly sentiment. I would say more like uh, something that literally you literally see and it looks good or something that sounds like a good idea. So, for example, we're going to go. Uh, our school is is putting together an exchange program to London in July. And I, I could say to everybody, let's go to London in July. And you'd say you could say. Sounds good. Okay. Right? Parece, parece uma boa. Parece uh -huh. alguma coisa legal. Tipo so, uma it, ideia, né? Uh -huh, uma, ideia. uma boa ideia. Good, yeah. So it can either be literal, something that literally looks good, or something that uh, is a good idea. Okay. Good question. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about must. Who can tell me what the synonym for must is? What is an, another way that is less formal that we can say must? Anybody know? So for example, if I say, go ahead, Joe. Okay. Right. And what's another way that we can say 100% obrigação that is less formal? Do you remember? For example, if I say you, you must go, what's another way to say you must go? Um exemplo. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's another way. There's another way that's that's less formal. To say you must go. I must go to work. <laughs> okay, I must go to work. What's another way to say must? A synonym for must. Does anybody know? So if I say you must go or I must go to work, that's 100% obligation, but it's a little bit more formal. If I say I have to go to work, it's also 100% obligation but it's less formal than must. So both must and have to are 100% obligation, but must is more formal and less common in the United States to use must than to use have to. So must is used to show that it's necessary or very important that something happens, like we, like we always say 100% obligation, 
expressing an opinion about something that is logically very likely. So it can also be a way to tell, give someone, it's almost like you're giving your opinion, but you're saying the person has to do it. Okay, so for example, the building is on fire, but people inside must not run. Okay, uh, the, o prédio está em chamas, está uh, queimando, mas pessoas dentro não podem. Não, uh, so, uh, the idea here is 100% de obrigação. Não é só que não devem, uh, não devem correr, mas não podem, não dá. É 100% obrigação, não não uh, é permitido. And, and the idea is 100% obligation. If it doesn't, if, if you if you say you must do something and you don't do it, or you say you must not and then you do it, then bicho vai pegar. That's that's the idea. Uh, something very bad. There will be very bad consequences. In this case, the bad consequences: people could die because people run, they fall, other people fall on top of them, they burn, people die. A very bad situation, obviously. Uh, he helped that blind man. So here's the second meaning of must, which is, I like to translate as deve ser que seja. He helped that blind man, he must be cool. Ele deve ser legal. In this case, it's not 100% obligation, but deve ser que seja. So we have 100% obligation with must, and then we have the other thing that eu percebo, alguma coisa que eu percebo, que ele deve ser legal. So the example I like to use, um, if you tell me what's something, what's something that you guys are good at? Tell me something that you're good at, some skill that you have. Does anybody have any special skills? Something you've been doing for a while? No. Okay. So let's let's suppose that Joe plays tennis. Okay. So let's suppose that you play tennis. And uh, you have been playing tennis for 15 years. So if a person has been playing tennis for 15 years, I can say, so we'll use uh, Joe as an example. If, if Joe has been playing tennis for 15 years, I could say, she must be good. Right? She must be good. So it's just like Portuguese. In Portuguese, I can say, ela deve... Jogar bem. Não é que ela tem obrigação de jogar bem. Mesmo depois de 15 anos. Tem gente falando em inglês há 15 anos e não falam bem. Right? Não tem uma obrigação, mas eu estou falando que deve ser que seja. Então, nós temos isso também em português. Ela deve jogar bem. Ela joga há 15 anos, ela deve jogar bem. Não é que ela deve, tem o dever de jogar bem. So it's the second meaning of must is this idea of deve ser que seja. Third sentence, when you got lost in the forest, you must have been worried. So when you got lost in the forest, you must have been worried. The same kind of idea. Você deve ter ficado preocupado. Right? No, não tem o dever, mas deve ser que seja. Okay, so those two sentences fall into that idea of must. And any questions on must? No? Okay. Together. Together is juntos, junto, uh, with proximity to another person or people at the same time. So when we're close to someone else in, in a group, together requires someone. So two or more people. What do we want to say with this? We want to say that we don't say, I went together with, uh, w when we say th this in Portuguese, there's not a problem to say, eu fui junto. But in English, we don't use, I went together, because in English, we need two people to use together. So I could say, I went together with you. Eu fui junto com você. Right? So then we have two people, but then, se eu, se eu colocar com você, eu não preciso de, nem preciso de junto. I went with you. Or I went together with you. É, é possível, mas não preciso daí ou, ou together. John always comes together with her. So not John always comes together, but John always comes together with her. That puts two people. 
do you all work together? Okay, so do you all, then if it's all, all you all, then it's going to be at least two people, maybe three, maybe more, then, then it's together. So if we put we, we is always at least two people, me and someone else in order to be we, it's always plural. So I can use we and then with together. We graduated together. Nos formamos juntos. We graduated together. So the thing to remember with together is that I can't use it like we use it in Portuguese. De eu vou junto, ele vai junto. There has to be two people. So nós vamos juntos, pode ser. Ou eu vou junto com você. Or one of those other, one of the other ways in a sentence so that we have at least two people, two or three or four or more, but not just one person in the sentence. Plural. Plural. Think, uh, plural. Yep, exactly, exactly. So, and that, that's the main thing because sometimes, I mean, it, it's one of those things where it's easy to think, oh, eu vou junto and say, I, I go together. And it sounds strange. It's one of those things that it sounds weird, but it would be understood. If I said, I, um, uh, somebody says, I'm going to the store. Oh, I go together. Right. It sounds, sounds weird in English, but they would understand. Okay. You want to go with me. I then, so then it, it, that works. Uh, I mean, it works as, as far as being understood, but it's, it's one of those things that just sounds like there's something missing. Like when I came to Brazil and I used to say, ah, uh, eu gosto de futebol, eu gosto de você. Because in English, we don't have, eu gosto de você, eu gosto de futebol. So when I said, eu gosto de você, the person understood that I liked, I liked them. But there was that little thing missing. And that's the case here. It would be understood, but it sounds like, oh, uh, tadinha ainda não fala perfeitamente, right? So that's what we want to avoid. And that's all. Okay, let, let's uh, correct lesson 45. So let's start with Feliciana, number one. Aquilo. Uh, what is that? What's that? What's that? Uh huh. What's that? Joe? By the way, when does the winter end? É, a propósito, quando termina o inverno? Uh huh. Beto? Rui? O inverno termina no fim de fevereiro. The winter ends the end of February. 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 Very good. Que ótimo. Eu estou indo para Toronto também. Great. I'm going to Toronto too. Toronto. Yeah, he mais mais anglo-saxônico. Toronto. Toronto. Good. Joe. Você ainda está doente? Do you, do you still do you still sick? Okay, so how do I if I say estou doente? How do I say estou doente? I am sick. Ah, are you okay, sick? I'm sick. I am sick. Yeah. So, você está doente? Are you still sick? Are you still sick? Yes, exactly. Beto? Do you still have that blue hat? Você ainda tem aquele chapéu azul? Yes, very good. Feliciana? Eu não tenho uma jaqueta vermelha. 
I don't have a jacket, a blue jacket, a red jacket. Red jacket, good. Joe? What's the coat? Come what, yep. What's your coat? Usually, I mean, there, there's a slight difference between jacket and coat, but um, where, like my family, when I was growing up, we everything, we always use coat. We used coat for everything, but some people use jacket for everything. Some people differentiate between what a coat and a jacket is. I looked it up once because I don't even know exactly the difference between a coat and a jacket. I think a coat can be long. You know, it can be... Uh, it covers everything where a jacket is, is just usually just the top, but it's not, I mean, it doesn't make a big difference. Some people use jacket for everything. Some people use coat for everything. I left my car on 50th Avenue. I left my car on the Avenida. Avenida. Yep. Good. That. Eu deixei a minha jaqueta na casa do meu pai. I left my jacket at my dad's house. Good. Feliciana? It's very cold at Mount Rainier. 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 The most beautiful mountain in the United States. Uh, uh, what city? Uh, it's near Seattle, of course. Of course, it's 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 in the state of Washington. You can see it from Seattle. Actually, I, I always like to do this because it is fantastic. If we go, uh, there's one. I always find one picture. I always find where here it is. Here, so this is Seattle, and you can see Mount Rainier in the background. So this is the Space Needle and the buildings and stuff. And uh, there's the uh, music project, a, muse a musical museum there. And then back in the background, beautiful Mount Rainier. Oops. Yes. Someday I'm gonna I'm gonna take a group to Seattle and Vancouver. We're gonna go and exchange maybe maybe 2024, July of 2024. We're gonna take a group to Seattle and Vancouver to do uh, an exchange. It's gonna be fantastic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take everybody to my friend's house. We're gonna have a, an American barbecue. It's gonna be awesome. Tan, who is it? Is it? I, it's very cold. Um, sempre fica <coughs> sempre fica muito frio aqui. It was hours um, very cold here. Is it a question or or a statement? Question. <laughs> uh, it was it hours very cold here. Why was the owls, owls, oh, always, owls. always, always? There we go. Okay, so you're asking a question, right? Question, uh huh. And so you're going to start. Is does it have the verb to be? It, it's, it's right. It's. So it's, but it's a question, so we don't use it's. What do we use? Is it. Is it so the is whole it, sentence again? Is it always uh cold, cold, very cold here? Very cold here. I remember very cold here. Is it always very cold here? Very cold here. Good. Uh huh. Beto, question. Did you have a Seattle is near to Vancouver? Seattle, it, it, so in that case, same, same thing, right? You're going to start with is, because it's a question. Is Seattle near Vancouver? Good question. Yes, it is. I think it's about five hours by car. So Vancouver, so you have Seattle, and then you have the Canadian border, and then you have uh, Vancouver. Actually, let me, I'm visual, so let me show you that. Thank <laughs> you. 
So let's find one here that has So uh, let me see if this will let me zoom out. So we can see here, this is the map of Washington, which is in the Northwest. So it's the last state before Canada. And so this is Canada. This is British Columbia. Seattle is here on the, uh, on the Puget Sound. It's part of the, the ocean here. There's Seattle right there. And then you go up Interstate 5 and you go up to up here. And then I think it's just above there where we have uh, Vancouver. Let's see if. Here, this one probably has it. Oh, shoot. They want to sell me a map. So, and like this is Vancouver Island. There's an island there. That's Vancouver Island. And so it's just, just above the border with the United States. So it's about five hours by car. About around there, around five hours. Okay, did I was going to ask uh, Feliciana? You asked about when I said Mount Rainier. Did you did you do that question? Did you translate that, or did I cut you off? Uh, Acabou traduzindo eu te cortei não, falando de Mount Rainier. Não. Okay, não, vamos lá. de Mount Rainier. É muito frio na montanha, na Roene Montanha. Yeah, good. Fez nessa 11, pode, posso falar para assim, easy, easy, get cold here? Good, good question. So is it always, always cold? Dead. Oh, so yeah, one second. So the first one that Joe said was, is it always cold here? Which is perfect. But the, there is, yes, you can say, does it always get cold here? Yes, you can use get cold. So the, 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 they're basically synonymous. The two sentences are basically, basically have the same meaning. The only difference is sempre é frio aqui ou sempre fica frio aqui. So to get cold, ficar frio. So basically the same thing. If you say, like, is it always hot in Palmas or does it always get hot in Palmas? The only difference would be the difference between estar quente and ficar quente. Oh, ficar frio e estar frio. Good question. And yes, basically. The... Those. Okay, because how do you say ficar, ficar quente, ficar frio? Get cold. To, to get right to get cold in the in the case here. So is get strong or weak? Is the verb get strong or weak? Uh, strong. No, get is weak, yeah. and that's why that's why we need does because get is weak. So, for example. Uh, do you get cold in the winter? Do you get cold in the winter? Você fica com frio no inverno? So here, do you get cold? Because I'm talking about you. When I talk about the, the weather, how do I say, está chovendo? Uh, it's raining. Good. It's raining. Now, when I say it's raining, 
When I talk about weather, I use it. It's a, a general it. O que que tá chovendo? Uh, o meu ambiente, uh, o que que é? é o, o, when, when we talk about nature, quando falamos de natureza, we nos usamos it's. It's raining. It's sunny. It's cold. It's windy. It's hot. So because of the it, then when we talk about the weather, we use it. So then because of the it, we need does. Does it get cold? Now let's take, let's stay with this theme of Seattle. Does it get cold in Seattle? So we use the does because get needs an auxiliary verb and because we have it when we talk about weather. So those are the two reasons. The, so why don't I use does when... So why don't I use does in this sentence? Who can tell me? If, if I use does with it in this sentence, why don't I use does with it in this sentence? Porque não está falando do, do tempo. But the cold? Cold seria sobre tempo. Good guess, though. Any other guesses? Anybody? Yes. Because we don't have a weak verb. Get is weak, so we need an auxiliary. Is is strong. So we don't need an auxiliary. So we don't use do or does when we have is, and that's why. Get is weak. We need does because of it. Is is strong. So instead of using do or does, then we just invert. And it's cold in Seattle. Then becomes the question, is it cold in Seattle? And that's why this question doesn't have does. Okay? Okay. Very good question. All right. I think we're, is it Beto? Twelve. I'm going to New York too, but only at the end of the winter. Winter. Estou indo para Nova York também, mas somente no final do inverno. Yes, very good. Feliciana? Eu acho que é muito, que é mais ou menos no final de fevereiro. I guess. Mais ou menos. I guess. I guess it's about the end of February. So one interesting thing here <clears throat> is that in this case, we probably wouldn't use guess. This is one of those situations where eu uso guess nessa situação se algo me levou a pensar isso. So, se eu falar que alguém pergunta, quando é o final do, uh, do inverno? E eu falo... Uh, o, so, quando... Uh, eu, uh, eu falo... Alguém pergunta, quando é o final do inverno? E eu falo, uh, no final de janeiro, the end of January. And Beto says, no, no, it's at the end of February. And I say, oh, I, I guess it's at the end of February. Okay, so eu uso guess nessa, numa situação dessa onde alguma coisa me levou. Ou seja, Beto me corrigiu, daí agora eu, ah, tá, então 
parece que. So remember, na, na, na maioria das vezes que nós usamos I guess, nós traduzimos como parece que, em vez de eu acho. Então, você está certa, vai ser, nesse caso, provavelmente, vai ser... I think. I think. Now, remember, when we have the verb to be, the verb to be exige nome ou pronome. So, I, não posso falar, I think is about. I think it is. Isso. Uh -huh. I think it's about the end. Final de fevereiro. Oh. And, yeah. I think it's about the end of February. And you can also, you, you don't. 100% need it, but I would put it's at about. It's at about the end of February. É, pode ser around também. What's that? Uh, can be around. Around, yeah, sure. So in that case, when you ask, you would say, can it be or could it be? Could it be is probably more, more used, but yeah. Uh, about or around. The end of February, exactly. Joe? Uh, I left my jacket at my mo mom's house. I left my jacket at my mom's house. Eu deixei minha jaqueta na casa da minha mãe. Mm -hmm. Very good. Feliciana? Está nevando. It is snow. Snowing. Snowing, good. So, se eu falar, é neve, aí seria, it's snow. Está nevando, it's snowing. Joe? E o Beto, saiu? Saiu. Acho que... Foi internet, foi internet. I hope she's not sick. É, eu espero que ela não fique doente. In this case, que ela não esteja, não esteja doente. Yeah, exactly. How would you say? Eu, eu espero que ela não fique doente. I hope she's not. É, went. I went hope. It, que ela não foi. Ou era? Eu vou, te, eu vou te ajudar. Was. I. Não, so was ou was é foi. Went é foi de movimento, de ir. So, e, esses não são que ela não fique. How would you say? Eu, eu fiquei doente. I was sick. I was sick. Eu estava doente. I was doente. Yeah, so daí se lembra que I was sick é que eu estava já no estado de estar doente. Mas nós temos um verbo que nós usamos no ano, nós passamos de são para doente. Sim. You remember? Não. Feliciana, do you remember? Uh, stay. Stay é permanecer doente. Que só nós temos duas coisas. Na verdade, nós temos três termos, right? Temos que está doente, que permanece doente, que é stay sick. E nós temos o terceiro que passar de são para doente, que é I hope she doesn't get sick. Right? So, se lembra, to get sick, to get é o que nós usamos para passar de estado, de uh, I, I got mad, eu fiquei bravo. I got sick, eu fiquei doente. Um, I got... Uh, what's, what's another state... Um, I got tired. Eu fiquei cansado. Fiquei com sono. I got tired. Okay, so, é get que nós usamos quando passamos de um estado para outro. Feliciana? My, my mother always get sick. Yeah. And the of winter. 
at the end of winter. At the end. At the end of winter. Of winter. winter. Uh, e você gosta da sua mãe? Sim. So, daí, quando nós gostamos, chamamos de mom. É mais, mom. mais usado do que mother. A menos que seja uma, uma situação formal. Uh, ou, ou um pouco mais formal. Quase sempre vai ser mom. Uh, so, my mom... Daí, esse, esse é o exemplo, right? Get sick, você falou. Always, always get sick. Ah, oh, good. Uh -huh. But what's the problem? Se eu falar, minha mãe fica doente. My mom... Gets, yes. right? Terceira pessoa singular. Eu acho que é, é uma das coisas mais difíceis de lembrar. É para colocar o S no verbo na terceira pessoa singular no presente. Porque é... Eu, eu é, tenho que sentar e desenvolver ou um mantra ou uma musicazinha para cantar para as pessoas lembrarem do S. Porque realmente... It's not easy. Joe? I always go to mountain rain in the winter. Rainier. Rainier. Mountain Rainier. Re, so, com R no final. R, R na, na frente, R no final. Rainier. Rainier. Good. Eu escolhi não só porque é, é minha montanha favorita e a mais bela dos Estados Unidos, mas também é um exercício no R. <laughs> Rainier. Good. Uh -huh. I always go to Monte Rainier in the winter. Eu sempre vou na montanha Rainier no inverno. Very good. Luciana? A propósito, aqueles são os meus skis. By the way, it is... I is my... I don't know, skis. 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 Mm -hmm. By the way, I my skis. Okay, how do you say aqueles? That. That é aquele, aquela, aquilo. So singular. What is the plural? Those. Those. Those are my skis. And it's very common to hear, I, the first time you said it's. A, a, a nossa tendência de, de querer colocar S no plural de tudo uh, causa isso de it's, mas o que significa it's? It is a sound. C -E. é dele ou dela. Sendo coisa. It's com apóstrofo, daí é it is. É ou está com coisa. Ok? So, uh, tem dois it's. Tem o it's de... The, the, if I say, for example, uh, the dog broke its leg. The dog broke its leg. O cachorro quebrou a perna dele. Eu estou chamando cachorro de coisa nesse, nesse caso. O que eu chamo de coisa, a Val chama de ele, mas eu chamo de coisa que não gosto muito. Okay, so the dog broke its leg. Uh, so it's quando é possessivo de uma coisa. Aí it's com apóstrofo quando é com, 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 uh, contração de it com is. Joe? Uh, do you still have two gray skis? Mm. Você ainda tem fala, aqueles... Fala that. 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 Those. Those. Ah, that's perfect. That was perfect. Você ainda tem aqueles... Aqueles... Skis cinza? Good. Uh-huh. Okay, Feliciana, ask Joe, number one. 
Jo, where do you live your head when you are not using use it? I I'm I'm not using head. Uh, so in, the, in that case, I'm not using hats if it's in general. Hats. I'm not using hats. You don't seem you don't seem like a hat person. What does that mean? If I say you don't seem like a hat person. I I I don't use see. I don't use. I, I don't use. I don't person. <laughs> I don't like seeing. Eu não sou uma pessoa que usa. Exactly, exactly. So in this sentence that that I said, when I said you don't seem like a hat person, what does that mean? I don't seem like a hat person. What what does that mean? You you don't seem like a hat person. Ah, você, você não é alguém que usa chapéu. Você, você não, não é... parece. Nós vimos nessa lição, right? Sim. Você não Sim. parece uma pessoa que usa Sim. chapéu. Yes. You don't seem like a hat person. All right, Joe to to Felicia, number two. Uh, tell me where you would buy a new backpack. I I bought my new backpack in, uh Centauro store. Okay, Centauro. You can just say Centauro. Centauro. Okay. Bought your new backpack at Centauro. Did you really? No, it's the imagination. Okay. <laughs> not, not really. <laughs> okay. No worries. Uh, good. I, I bought my last backpack in the United States. Oh, oh. what store? Because, uh, Do you remember the store? No, no. No? Okay. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> I know I don't I don't maybe stuff. Okay. Maybe, uh, maybe five years. Five years ago. Five years. Very good and very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but it lasts, right? Dura, it lasts. Yeah. What what brand is the backpack? Oi? What brand? Ah, uh, brand. I don't know brand. Do you know, Joe? Brand is Marca. Uh, the uh, Nike, Nike, no, but it's the Nike, but I don't, I don't uh, bought it in Nike store. Okay, but I, okay, so how would you say? So you said, but I, don't buy at Nike store. Okay, so you want to say, Eu não compro? Não comprei. Não comprei. How do you say, Não comprei? Não. How, how, what would the whole I, sentence be? I don't, I não comprei. I. I don't. I don't know how to break. It's the. So, Joe, can you help?
Eu não entendi a pergunta. Eu, eu, não, não, eu não comprei, comprei na, na, na loja. Aham, na... aham. Uh -huh, uh -huh. É, yeah, mas, mas em inglês. <risos> pois é, isso que eu não entendi. É para me fazer ah, a pergunta. É, yeah, como, é como é que fala? Porque I, I don't buy, não, I não comprei. Você se lembra como dizer eu não comprei? I, I not, I not, but, I bought, I didn't buy. Right? right, so bought é o passado, mas quando nós usamos... Quando co colocamos no passado simples, temos que mudar apenas o verbo auxiliar e deixar o verbo principal em paz. Sim. I didn't buy it at the Nike store. Right? So, duas coisas aqui. So, no simple, simple past, fica didn't, na neg negativa, didn't, e o buy fica normal. E precisamos também de it, não comprê-lo. Ou comprê-la. E não, right? Não pode. Não, não a comprei na, na loja do, do Nike. E a outra coisa, pronúncia Nike. Não é como os brasileiros falam Nike, mas é Nike. Ok. Very good. We will finish this up on Tuesday. And uh, we will also do the review of lessons 41 to 45. So look in your workbook at the uh, last review, the review of 41 to 45, because that's what we will be doing on Tuesday after we finish correcting. All right, I will. Let me... Right. If you would like, you can go. I'm going to check and see if we have any comments, and we don't. So that's it for today. Don't forget, I will put at some point in in over the top of Feliciana's head and over the top of Joe's head. I will put videos for you to watch. Uh, maybe that those or something or to get for sick and make sure you watch those videos thanks everybody until next time i'm teacher willie keep studying and don't give up